Fall is in full swing and I love making hearty meals that are delicious and satisfying without sacrificing my quality of ingredients. So today I'm gonna share one of my favorite soups for the fall season. Hi everyone, it's Jess, and welcome to my channel. I love using this place to share how I'm discovering what it means to truly live well with the hopes of inspiring and encouraging you to do the same. And nothing quite hits the spot like a delicious cup of soup on a cool fall day. And I'm currently under the weather and I've been surviving on soup. Um, I eat a ton of soup in the fall to begin with. I just find it so delicious and satisfying. But when you're sick, you definitely need all the healing benefits of the ingredients in the soups and so today I'm gonna share my butternut squash soup recipe I love this recipe guys it has been on repeat I have had it at least once a week for the past several weeks and anytime I make it for other people they love it so I really wanted to share the recipe with you guys I was filming it the other day in my kitchen as I was making it for an event so it's a little bit more haphazard than I usually like to have my cooking videos but I was just really wanting to get this recipe out to y'all and you know sometimes when you're a busy mom you gotta make it work <laughs> but this recipe is filled with healthy nourishing ingredients and the final product seriously is so just hearty and satisfying and just so so yummy and it is paleo and whole 30 compliant so if those are things that you're trying to do it'll definitely work with that but let's go ahead and get into the video let's start by talking about the ingredients that you'll need so you will need some broth I really like to use chicken bone broth you can make your own or I buy it in bulk from Costco they have a great price and their brand that they carry there is really delicious you'll also need some kind of healthy oil. I'm using avocado oil, but you can use coconut oil or olive oil as well. You'll need full fat, unsweetened canned coconut milk. Don't buy this stuff in the carton. This stuff is really what you need here. You'll need a butternut squash, of course. It is a butternut squash soup. An apple. I'm using a gala, but you can use anything that's not tart like a green apple. Don't use that, but any sweet apple will work. And a sweet onion. And for spices, you'll need cinnamon, sea salt, and pepper. And I like to add cayenne pepper and turmeric. The cayenne gives it a little bit of a kick, and I love the health benefits of turmeric, so I sneak it in wherever I can, and I do like the flavor that it adds to the soup. And I forgot to include it when I was doing my first scan of ingredients, but you'll also need some garlic. I really don't ever measure any of my spices. I always just kind of eyeball it, so just keep that in mind that this is very customizable and you can adjust things to your taste. So the first thing we need to do is roast our butternut squash, so I like to cut it in half, and then I'll remove the guts and the seeds, drizzle it with oil, and sprinkle on the sea salt and some pepper. Then I like to roast it face down at 400 degrees for about 45 to 50 minutes. If you have a smaller butternut squash, you won't want to do quite as long. If you have a bigger one, you'll probably want to do a little bit longer. So just be sure to adjust as needed. You can also cook on like parchment paper or something like that if you want to, but I have like a dedicated roasting pan, so I don't mind if it marks up my pan a little bit because it's the one I always use to roast vegetables. When the butternut squash has about 10 to 15 minutes left in the oven, that's when I like to get the other ingredients going. So I'll go ahead and dice up the onion and saute and some avocado oil with the garlic and after that's gone for a few minutes I'll go ahead and peel and chop up my apple and add it in there after about five minutes or so and really get it sauteing together you want those onions to get nice and caramelized and the apples to get nice and soft when the butternut squash is done cooking in the oven go ahead and remove it I like to carefully flip it face up and let it cool for a little bit before I handle it while the squash is cooling I like to get a head start on blending so this is more of like a pureed soup so you're going to blend all your ingredients so I go ahead and add my full quart of the broth to the onions garlic and apples and using an immersion blender I'll use that to blend it all together you can also use a traditional standing blender and do it in batches that way but I do find that by mixing a little bit together at a time it just doesn't make my blender have to work as hard so it's a lot easier just to work in batches this way when the squash is cool enough to handle go ahead and separate it from the skin and add it to your soup mixture and blend it in with it and after you've blended in the squash then we're gonna go ahead and add in our can of full-fat coconut milk to the mixture and blend it as well 
Then it's time to blend in your spices, so go ahead and add some extra salt and pepper if you feel like you need it, and then the cinnamon, turmeric, and cayenne pepper. Again, I don't measure, I kind of eyeball it, but I like to give a healthy little sprinkle of cinnamon, and I adjust my cayenne depending who all in my household is eating it, but if I'm cooking for adults, I like to add a little bit extra just to kick up that spice level, and um, I give a generous amount of turmeric as well. But you can definitely start with a little bit and add more if needed. I like to kind of taste as I go. It's You can't really take stuff away once you put it in a dish, but you can definitely add more. So if you're new to cooking from scratch and are used to measuring and the idea of not measuring kind of scares you, my recommendation would be just to start off with a little bit of each and take some taste and just go from there. But for me, cooking is a very intuitive thing and I think our taste buds are different, right? So the way I like to season my soup may not be exactly the way you like to season your soup. Maybe you like a ton of cayenne and just a touch of cinnamon, or maybe you don't want turmeric in there at all. I mean, that's totally optional. So um, just play around with the ratios and see what you like. That's it though, guys. This makes a truly delicious, healthy, nourishing butternut squash soup. I seriously love it so much, guys, and I love when I make it for people, and they love it as well. There's nothing quite like cooking for somebody and then really enjoying a meal that you prepared. There's something just really special about that. I really hope you guys enjoyed this recipe. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so I know to make more videos like this in the future. It also really helps out my channel. And if you're new, don't forget to click subscribe. I'd love to have you part of the Live Well Jess community and get to know you, but I've got my mug. I got some leftover soup I'm going to go get <laughs> and I'm going to lay in bed and sip on it and try to get feeling better because this mama can't be sick for much longer. I don't have time for it. So. <laughs> I hope you guys are having a really great day and until I see you in the next one, live well.